We're here at NAM 2023 talking with Dave Malikpour of Osberger. Uh, and you make uh, speakers, unusual looking speakers. Could you tell us about the company and how you came to be doing this? So uh, my name is Dave Malikpour. I'm the president of Osberger Monitors and Pro Audio Design. We've been making uh, Osberger monitors for 25 years. Uh, we were traditionally making very large in-wall speaker systems in some of the world's greatest studios. And along the way, people kept asking me, when are you going to make a small speaker? And the thing about our sound is that it's really a very powerful speaker with no limits in many ways. And so artists love them, producers love them because they can really feel the music almost like a performance, but the engineers love them because they're accurate. So we came out with this near field mixing system, which brings that really big sound into a small package that can fit in a lot of rooms. Um, you can buy this system either as a two way, which doesn't have the sub, or you can add the sub to, for a full range mixing system. Um, with the subwoofer, this thing goes down to 20 Hertz and our high frequency horn goes out to 20K. So it, it has this incredible openness while having some warmth because of the maple horn. Uh, we use a beryllium driver a uh, beryllium diaphragm and a compression driver behind that wood horn. So it has incredible sensitivity and detail um, and a beautiful top end that is very revealing and natural without ever getting harsh. Um, the system is powered by our, our DSP controlled amps that have DSP tuned software and that allows us to control the crossover, the EQ, and we can tune it to the user's room and even uh, create multiple presets. So if you have different customers with different needs, or you want to have like a really bass heavy mix for a playback system or produ a producer that maybe wants to feel a little bit more or you want to have a really accurate mixing curve you can have all those different things in one system um, you can also have a two-way setup and, a, and switch to a three-way so some of our clients that are working at home at night they really can't have a subwoofer banging away because they have neighbors um, they can put it on two-way and still have that great accuracy um, and because we have presets, we can adjust where the, the low frequency is adjusted for the, for the near field. So if you're just using the two-way system, we can tune it all the way down to 35 hertz. It's going to lose a little volume because that's still a six and a half inch woofer. But when you tune it up to, let's say, be a mid-range driver, it can go with the subwoofer and produce over 120 dB. So you can get a full main monitor experience on a desktop size speaker. Dave, you are so good at this. You answered so many questions that I was thinking of asking, and you, then you would answer. Um, for those that don't know, near field monitoring is uh, a speaker is placed close to you, and you, you might be sitting at a mixing console, a large frame mixing console, and using a near field monitor in that context. And uh, in my experience, one of the near field monitors that was uh, 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 preferred was the Yamaha NS10 and it was preferred because the sound was not good but it was representative of what normal consumers might be listening to this is this seems like a very precise very if you want to know exactly what you're what you're putting down this sounds like the system to do that am I right yeah well you know and the NS10 has definitely been bashed as not good sounding, but it's it's a tool. It's a jo it does a job exactly. And what it, what it really does is help a, a mixing engineer understand the mid range. Uh, the, the 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 shortcomings of the speaker were the very high end and the very low end. So in a lot of ways, what what a mix engineer needs, whether it's a near field or a main monitor, is really detailed mid range because almost every speaker produces that range. And I think that's why the NS10 became the sort of de facto standard. Um, and you know, if you got your mix sounding good on it, it seemed to transfer pretty well. Uh, but you do have to learn how to use it because you don't really hear the low frequency in full uh, same volume as you'd hear the mid range. This speaker system, we can get a lot of that same mid range character and detail and clarity, but we can go to the full range and hear everything. And, you know, back at the time when the NS10 was in use, people weren't recording down to 20 hertz because the recording mediums, like a tape machine, would roll off the bottom end around 50 hertz or 60 hertz. So a lot of the small speakers were rolling off as, you know, NS10 starts to roll off at 100 hertz. So the benefit of that is that, you know, you're really focused on that mid-range. Here, 
we're able to give you everything from 20 hertz to 20K very realistically. So you can hear every bit of what you're putting down on the DAW. Most people today are recording digitally. So that, that has full bandwidth. You're not really compromising. So you really do want to hear that. And you know when you're listening to something like a 50 hertz kick drum sound, if you have the right amount of 20 hertz in it, you're going to really feel it and understand it better than if you just have it missing. And, and so our system allows you to hear everything and choose what part you want to record and what you want to capture. So I think it's a better way in the long run. But a lot like the NS10, we can set the mid-range to be very accurate and detailed so you're able to balance your vocals, balance your, inter, you know, in, your instrument balance between the vocal, the snare, the guitar, all these things that are kind of in that, in that frequency range. The difference here is that it will never compress, it'll never fall apart, it has extreme output. So when you're operating the system, it's never going to distort or lose accuracy. Um, and I think, you know, obviously today, if you have the budget for something of a premium system like this, it's probably because you're a professional and you need a professional tool. And that's what this really is, ultimately. It also happens to be inspiring because it can produce low end as accurately as, as you want, but without restriction. So it can really give you some bottom end that is like a performance. And, you know, if you're overdubbing a bass guitar and you're just listening on headphones or on a little teeny speaker, you're going to play your, your bass instrument or, your, or your, your drum machine differently than if you can express it and feel it like it's a performance. So this system gives you accuracy and also that performance feeling. Um, and I think it, it makes it unique in the market. And uh, we also use these in Atmos for Dolby Atmos so they can you know, be all around you. And, and we made the speaker a small speaker specifically with that in mind. Uh, so it's it's a little lighter weight than some of our really big systems using a Baltic Birch cabinet instead of MDF. We have a lot of things that we've done with it. The, the horn is rotatable, so you can actually sit it on top of a, a console meter bridge if you want to go old school and, and have it sitting you know, on the top of your SSL or Neve or something like that or API. Um, so it has a lot of applications. We're actually using them in a playback environment for a, for a, a semi-theatrical performance space that's interesting. Uh, and again, an immersive space, so there's a lot of them around the room. Um, and we see it as, it, it just has a lot of, a lot of capabilities. Um, our number one thought is to mix records um, and, and to inspire pr producers and performers. Uh, but, you know, we'd love it to, to find its way into all other, other uh, markets as well, so. Again, you answered so many questions there. So this, this, this really could do, you could get whatever you wanted to get from an NS10 from this or the highest end. Right, so a lot of times we'll, we'll shape the curve to what the engineer producer wants. So we'll first start with our target curve, which is you know, based on years of tuning speakers for mix engineers and studios. But then you know, everybody hears a little differently. You know, if you've been referencing on an NS10 or a Focal or an ATC or some other speaker, you might have that curve in your mind. And so we, we can adjust our speaker infinitely to, to your curve. And if you, if you look at the software, we have 10 bands of EQ per driver, and we also have a 10 band parametric on the input. So we can really shape it, create presets that respond to different users, different rooms, different needs, um, and you know, give, give you more than one speaker in this one speaker. So you can have it be a lot of different things. Are the drivers proprietary? Yeah, so we do, we, we have some proprietary technology here um, in the drivers. This driver was made for us that has over 350 watts of power capability. We have a, a, a diaphragm made by Materion that's uh, in, a, in a compression driver that uses their very best materials. Um, our subwoofers are made in Italy, OEM, um, and they, this is, you know, essentially uh, the best low frequency device we could find um, that also had extreme output. Um, in our bigger systems, we also offer TAD components. TAD Japan makes, I think, the world's greatest speaker components. So we incorporate them in our much bigger systems, but they don't have anything in these sizes. So we're, we're not able to bring those into these particular products. Um, but I also wouldn't underestimate the power of the amplifier. Um, I always like to think I was going to ask, you're answering a question again. Let's talk about the amplifier. Sure. So, you know, in a speaker system, I always think of the speakers as the car and the, and the amp is the motor. So, you know, a Ferrari wouldn't be a Ferrari without a Ferrari engine. Um, and this is our engine here. It's got DSP um, that allows us to do the crossover, 
uh, and we can shape it any which way we want. We have multiple um, types of slopes. We can overlap them. We can make them asymmetrical. So in the field, when we're tuning a room, the speaker responds to the environment. So we're able to change the shape and the delivery of the, of the signal to match the room performance. And that makes the system very unique because we're not forced into, well, this is our crossover and this is, now we have to try to adapt it to a room. We can adapt the way the speaker works in that room. Um, so it's, it's pretty powerful that way. We have 2,500 watts in the, in the low frequency channel. In this incarnation, we're using 400 watts in the mid-range and about 200 watts for the high frequency, which sounds like a lot, and it is, but a lot of it's about headroom. So if you're, if you're never stressing out the components and you're never stressing out the amplifier and everything's able to perform in its optimum range with no distortion, you get purity and you get openness and headroom, which when you're trying to get an incredible sound is really valuable. Um, and people love these amps because they're very fast, so you get a very um, natural response. So, you know, you hit a snare drum and your eyes blink. When you hear the snare coming through the, the speaker, it's just as fast as the, the stick hitting the snare. And that allows the, the engineer um, to get a, a very accurate blend and, and balance. Um, you know, one thing you mentioned about near field monitoring, and for your listeners, that, you know, the reason that in studios people use near fields was to eliminate the room, right? You're, you're gonna be, let's say, two to five feet away from the speaker, and hopefully your parameter in your room is much further away. So you're not gonna hear that reflection before you hear the direct signal. So we always wanna hear the direct signal between the speaker and our ears with as least amount of reflections and interaction with the room as possible. And so the people move from these big speakers down to near field monitors when, you know, people stopped investing as much in building rooms. We could say, hey, if I'm just gonna listen near field, I don't really need to spend a million dollars making a control room today. And it's really true, you know, but you'd be surprised the, the room still does affect even three feet away from your ears, depending on where your ceiling is, where your walls are. And, and one of the things that makes this speaker unique is the way the horn allows it to have controlled dispersion. So our horn is 70 degrees vertically and 100 degrees horizontally. So we can, just by positioning it, keep it from reflecting off the walls and the ceiling and the console and get you that direct signal. Um, and I think that's a really key point about listening, whether it's our speakers or any other, is trying to make sure that when you have them positioned that you're getting that direct signal with the least amount of interaction with the room. So, you know, it's obviously a little bit of a cheat in our speaker that we're able to get the speaker ahead of the room, usually by at least 3 dB, which makes the room kind of disappear. Um, but you know, with, with an amplifier that's got this kind of power, controllability, uh, tunability, and the fact that we can also dial in remotely and adjust it for you, uh, we're able to get a very, very accurate system every time in every room. Another unique aspect of, this, of these speakers is the aesthetics. Could you talk about that? Sure. So when we first started making speakers, we always painted them matte black, like everybody. You know, black is this un ubiquitous tech color. It looks tough, and it goes with everything. Uh, one day a customer asked, hey, can you, can you paint them uh, this bright orange color that I want? I was like, sure. We were using car paint at the time. So I spoke with my painter and he goes, so he mixed up some formulas and we, we, we painted them an incredible, uh, it was like a sun-kissed orange after the client's uh, family heritage of starting sun -kissed. So we, and suddenly we were getting calls from all over saying, hey, I don't remember the name of the studio, but they had these orange speakers and they sound unbelievable. And I realized that they were become part of the aesthetic of a facility. And so we, we've now painted over a hundred different colors. Um, and we have clients that send us color matches. We just painted a, a client speaker slime green for their, for their room to really bring out the character that they're building in the design of the room. This is a copper, to, uh, we call this copper top um, after a, a famous battery, but it's a, a metallic, car paint that has a beautiful look and finish um, but we and this one has a matte finish but we do gloss finishes satin finishes um, and really any color you can imagine some of the popular colors are Ferrari red you know performance white uh, some of the Mercedes silvers if you come to our booth 15308 we have a new 25th anniversary model a much bigger speaker that's painted in a AMG uh, Mercedes uh, silver metallic sparkle that just is just got beautiful you know character to it and would add beauty to any room and also picks up light incredibly well where if you have some color changing LEDs and you know you can really 
change the character of your room by by having the speaker kind of pick up that luster. Um, and um, you know, I think it makes it special and unique. And and a lot of times we're we're doing colors for a customer that are exactly matched to them and not repeated. So we have one of a kind opportunities as well as picking from our our range of you know regular colors like the Ferrari red or the performance white or the you know gloss black, piano black. Um, and now copper top is one of our standard colors. We've done this for artists like Wiz Khalifa uh, and a couple others, and we just loved it so much that we decided to make this for the for the NAMM show to just show off the sort of breadth and depth of how aesthetic this product can be. It is an upcharge, so you know you can get it in matte black today if that's what you like. Um, and we've we've done a lot of them in white, um, red, really any color you can imagine. Um, and when you look at our color chart, it's like whoa. It's a rainbow of colors, so we love that part of it, just to make it special for each customer. You know, you may have mentioned this, but I don't recall what is what is it, what is the casing constructed of. So this speaker is eleven uh, nine ply Baltic birch um, for the speaker cabinet. Um, our horns are made out of solid maple, and we have a whole mill shop in in our facility where you know we buy the wood in uh, twelve foot length boards. It's, they come in in two or three inch thickness depending on which horn we're making and so like the top and the bottom piece are solid maple that are carved on CNC and then they're hand finished and hand sanded um, this 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 horn is made out of seven pieces you have a top piece a bottom piece the side pieces the two fins and then there's a joining plate on the back that has precision mounted pins that allow us to unscrew these screws pull and rotate the horn so you can lay the speaker down horizontally or place it vertically, which allows us a lot of opportunity for optimum placement in the in the control room. Um, the, the subwoofer is made out of um, MDF, so it's using a one and a half inch thick baffle on the front, which makes it extremely rigid and allows the bass to come out as opposed to rattling the cabinet. We have almost no resonance in the cabinet. It's very small resonant frequency in the cabinet. so. That allows the bass to come out forward, and when you hear this, you're going to go like, oh my God, the, the way this produces low end is so natural and so unrestricted. Um, like, we could probably fill this whole room, and maybe I'll give you a demo in just a second so you can take it in for yourself and your listeners. But, um, and then we created this stand that allows us to, we can, you know, height it, we can, you, you order it to the height you want, because the height of the horn is very important to the dispersion. So, uh, you know, Everything that we make is built in Massachusetts. Um, our drivers are manufactured in different parts of the world. The, the high frequency components, uh, the, 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 the beryllium sourced here in America, um, the mid-range drivers are made in um, Spain and the woofers are made in Italy. And they're all OEM manufactured to us for our spec. Um, our amplifiers are assembled here in America, but the parts are sourced in Asia. Um, like all electronics these days, uh, but it is hand assembled here in America, and um, you know we, we have a lot of hand work to finish these speakers the way you see them. A, simp a, a system like this has about 11 coats between the initial fiberglassing of the cabinet, sealing it, uh, priming it, sanding it, and then every layer gets sanded. So to get that finish is about 11 step process, each one getting hand sanded in between. So there's a lot of labor of love in there and our team is really dedicated to that quality. Um, there's nothing in this system that we've chosen based on price. Everything is chosen based on achieving the very highest performance. Um, so we're really proud of that part, but that also means the price is not for everybody. Um, a system like this that you see here, finished in copper, with the stand, the cables, the amplifiers, and tuning at your studio is about twenty-one thousand. Um, you could also buy it just the the, the two near fields and one amplifier at about eleven thousand. Um, and the tuning is optional, so you could either get it remote, or we we do ship it with eleven presets, so you can just put them up and see which one works best in your room. And they're they're kind of dialed for you know close proximity to the front wall, far far from the front wall, uh, you know all kinds of different typical scenario so you know someone may not need that tuning but if you really want super accuracy on-site tuning or remote tuning allow you to dial it in specifically to your room so, so what is the sales process like do, do, are the uh, are these bespoke or do you have the products pre-manufactured or how does someone actually buy do they buy from you directly well right now this product is available directly through pro audio design our our, our sister company we do have some dealers that 
have access to the product, but right now, most of the product is sold direct. We like to have that close connection to the customer. Um, we do have some studio designers that also spec out our products and, and sell them to their customers. Um, and we've sold our products through places like uh, the typical pro audio dealers out there. So if they, if we, you know, if a dealer says, "I have a, a buy for you," we'll, we'll we'll sell through other dealers. But if customers want to talk to us directly, they can reach out at Hossberger.com uh, or ProAudioDesign.com, and we'll we'll work out specifically for them what they need. We do manufacture these to order typically, but we do, and as it turns out, we have stock coming off the line all the time, and usually can work with a customer to meet their delivery times. Um, our big speakers are all you know, built to order, and there's typically a lead time between six and 16 weeks, depending on the system, the color, the finish, and what the customer needs. We always try to meet customer needs, and uh, sometimes that's crazy demand, and we, you know, we just have to say, this is what we can do, but it is a somewhat bespoke product that's hand finished, and, and you know, if you want one that's in you know, Celtic green, we're going to make that for you. If you, you know, if you want a, a black, a matte black finish, we probably be able to turn that around pretty quickly for you. So, um, yeah, that's the story. And uh, you know, we, we love to to work directly with customers because of that tuning capability and understanding their room. What's the right size speaker for them? As I said, this is our smallest speaker, but we actually make 11 different speakers all the way out to a Quattro, which is four 15-inch woofers, double 18 subs, or four 18 subs. So guys like Snoop Dogg have those massive seven foot tall, you know, powered by 18,000 watts and capable of over 135 dB output. So it's not, you know. Uh, if you mentioned a couple of hip hop performers during the course of this interview, are you are you big in that community? Is it well, that's definitely a big part of our client base. But we have people like Coldplay and you know, uh, some really incredible producers of all genres. Uh, we're doing a classical studio right now. Uh, we're doing projects that are across every genre. Uh, we just did a demo for a customer who mixes classical records and he heard these and he said, okay, this is the very best speaker I've ever heard for producing classical music because it's it's like I'm inside the orchestra pit. So, you know, it's not genre specific, but, but because of the way that our low frequencies produced and where we started building these speakers in New York, initially the first systems went in in, in the beginning of hip hop music, guys like Jay-Z and you know, uh, Dre and all these different artists were using them to get their sound. And so it's been a big underpinning of the hip hop sound. Um, but it's, I think it's because those guys push the limits in the bottom end that this system will, is maybe the only one that can really produce it down those lows and at high volume without, you know, collapsing. On the other hand, uh, this beryllium diaphragm and this driver can produce incredible detail and character that you know, I think is unmatched uh, in, in many other products. So, you know, genres, you know, today the biggest selling records are, are urban music, pop records that have an urban music, you know, background, 808 kick drums, even some of our uh, country music artists that, that have our systems. We have uh, one of our biggest systems is in Curb Records in Nashville, where, you know, premier top uh, independent country label. And when they auditioned speakers, they chose ours because they felt they expressed what they were hearing the best. And and then and that start you know in, in a job like that, we also help with positioning and you know how the wall is going to be created to base you know to best represent the, the studio performance. So um, you know we cross every genre, every music lover, and they're really meant to give a performer a performance feeling while giving an engineer an accurate experience. So. That's a great blend between inspiring and and mixing. So, Dave, uh, Dave uh, Malikpur of Augsburger, I had no idea that this interview was going to be as interesting <laughs> as it was. But you really do know what you're talking about and speak about it with a genuine passion. I really appreciate that. Now, you did say you might want to give us a little demonstration and draw some attention to your exhibit here. So maybe. So tell me what kind of music you love. I'd love to play something you, you really dig, and then I can give you a little segment of, of a couple of uh, interesting tracks, if you like. Eddie, why don't you help us? Why don't you select something? What kind of music would you and Oh, how about one of your tracks? If it's on title, I've got it. 
Well, I, you want me to give you a little taste of something? Sure. I'm going to give you something that's a combination of acoustic and electric. Yeah, I don't know if I want to be standing directly. Well, you know, you, we all won't right. kill you. We all won't right, kill you. All right, all right. Yeah, switch that.